All right, well, we're back with the second episode of the Rent is Due podcast featuring myself and one of my homies from time, Mr. Zach Ronaldo. Thank you for joining us. This podcast is sponsored by absolutely fucking no one. <laughs> we do things our own way here. Maybe some Starbucks. Maybe. Yeah, maybe Starbucks and uh, Naya, Naya, whatever it's called. Yeah. Um, but uh, first and foremost, thanks for uh, for bringing us here. We're in uh, Rennie's new home away from home. Yeah, man, the dressing room. Yeah, the dressing so, room where it all began. Exactly, <laughs> where all the magic happens right here, uh, just outside Niagara and Pelham. Yep, yep. Um, this is uh, Pelham Panthers uh, Junior B program. Uh, the boys took over this summer. Yeah, it was maybe um, four or five months ago where it kind of. Uh, confirmed me as the head coach. I was looking to become head coach after being an assistant coach in minor hockey, and I was assistant coach two teams in one year. I was assistant coach in minor hockey, Toronto Red Wings. Oh, God bless. And then I got picked up um, by the Milton Menace in the OJ, and I was assistant coach there. So okay. I was doing two teams at once, and I just needed um, kind of my own. So this kind of fell into my lap, and it, you know, the the organization – um, had the same vision that I was trying to go after, and it just worked out, and here we are now. What's well, a fucking sick place? I did not, uh, I did not expect this. So thank you, uh, thanks for having us here. Yeah, this no is, problem, no problem. Awesome, My home man. is your home, always, always. My guy, always. Um, let's just uh, we'll, we'll touch up on basically uh, how we met first and foremost. Mm. Uh, well, obviously mm. for those that don't know, which was probably not a lot of you, but uh, you've had a pretty decent. Uh, NHL career, junior career, yep. uh, definitely made a living playing the mm -hmm. game that most Canadian kids only fucking dream about. I mean, I dreamed about it. Yeah, uh, I dreamed about it too. Yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll get into that a little later, but uh, it's pretty wild to think you're, what, 16? Uh, it might have been my third year in the R. When I met you? Yeah, yeah, probably. I was, I think I was 15 because I was playing junior A, getting called up in to the you hammer. guys. So I was 15 yeah. playing junior A, yeah. So we have this training camp, and this little fucking crazy Italian <laughs> kid from the hammer <laughs> comes to training camp. I'll never forget. We were at, I think, Hershey, maybe. And uh, was it Teen Ranch? Was it? No, that, that, that no. was the year, maybe the year after. Okay. I think we were at Hershey. Mm -hmm. And. I'm like, okay, this kid, like, whatever. It's yeah, it was a 14th round pick, so I was, yeah, it, it was relevant. Last name, I'm like, right. he's good. And then you line up to me, you're like, oh, let's go. I'm like, what? I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm like, not a fucking chance. I'm like, who is this fucking kid? I remember Any asking you to go. Oh, yeah, That's you picked the wrong awesome. guy. You're lucky you did. I didn't go. You know, tell you the truth. <laughs> I wouldn't have been on the team. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, funny story is that fucking game, I mean, you were going around fucking, you probably still, and I tell everybody, you must have been what five nine, 140 pounds. When I you was, came? yeah, yeah. If um, five nine, if that, if that. But an absolute assassin on the ice in more mm. ways than once. Just one of the hardest hitters, probably still to play fucking at the NHL level for your size. I think so. Like I think so. For I mean, sure. if people people watch your highlight reels, there's there's some heavy duty fucking hits, open ice, finishing yeah. your checks. Obviously, the game's changed a little bit. Yeah, for sure. But um, let's talk about what it took to get to that next level. Because mm -hmm. I look at myself, I'm like, okay, I could probably still toe drag the shit out of you. Yeah. But mm -hmm. there's a reason why you right. played X amount of games and made a living playing this game, yeah. doing what you did. Mm -hmm. So let's hear a little bit about what it, what it took mentally, physically, for that transition from coming from the hammer to a Ju or an OHL team yeah. and then fucking sayonara NHL yeah. career. It's, I have to give um, credit where credit's due. My dad installed <laughs> and ingrained hard work yeah. into my soul, into my brain, into my body. So I only knew work hard. Yeah. That was it. And, you know, when coaches and scouts were saying, all you need is hard work, all you need is hard work, I'm like, that to me is the easiest thing that I can Jesus, do. Yeah. All I have to do That's is outwork know. everybody. Yeah. Sign me up, no problem. So that mentality at like eight years old, being ingrained to me every single day in the basement, shooting pucks to where I'm, you know, I got blisters or where I'm crying because I don't want to be there down there no more. And my old man's, you know, we're down there. Um, 
that was the hard work came easy to me. Yeah. I loved it. I, I, I had fun doing it. I enjoyed it. So, um, that was it. I just outworked everybody. Yeah. I didn't care. And then that's, I think my competitive nature is just outworking and, um, add in the hockey element. Um, hockey to me was an outlet, yeah. um, where I could run around, her, uh, run away, hurt people, <laughs> yeah. but you know, I, I could say, take, I could out. take my aggression out yeah. and I can, it can hit and I can, you know, do things that I couldn't do off the ice and I wouldn't get in trouble for it on the ice. So that was a big part of me as a kid was using that as, as an outlet and then, you know, playing the system, playing your position, scoring goals that also came with it. But, um, at the end of the day, it was hard work, determination. Uh, you have to sacrifice to sacrifice a lot of my friends, a lot of time, a lot of events, um, proms and graduations yeah. and all that stuff. So sacrifice that people don't see. Right. Right. And you know, that is in the shadows, but, um, in a dedication, so hard work, dedication and sacrifice were the three things that I took pride in as a kid growing up. And I just put it into everything that I did when it came to hockey. So that's how I got out of, um, you know, just being a 14th round draft pick to the OHL into, you know, six round draft pick to the NHL to playing 11 years in the NHL. Fucking wild, dude. Mm -hmm. Honestly, like I, you know, we, I taught even all my buddies and everybody obviously knows that we, you know, we played together and we're yeah. still very tight, obviously. And it's yeah. like to think, you know, even growing up in the hammer, you, you know, the hammer is a steel town. It's a tough city, but like people don't understand toughness, especially in today's fucking generation, right. which is, which is huge. And the transition of your game, obviously, yeah, you're a tough guy. You fought, but you're telling you're telling a story prior which i wanted to i wanted to hear just based on the fact that a lot of these tough guys could fucking play right and they're good and they're skilled and they had crazy junior careers putting up fucking point a game more than a mm -hmm. point a game and the general public thinks that in order to get to the next level you have to find a role which sometimes is the case right but a lot of your skill as a hockey player got overshadowed because you beat the fuck out of people. Right. Plain and simple. Right. And it was funny because you were just telling a story. If you want to elaborate yeah. on that, because I think it's, it's crazy because I never heard that story and it, it makes total sense. And I'm like, Oh, and you were saying you regret it about prongs. Yeah. Right. And you regret it for a reason that makes right. me think well, I've known you my whole life. I'm like, I'm like, Oh yeah, obviously, yeah. you know, so just, yeah. just explain that again. So people understand yeah. the mentality as mm -hmm. a young guy going in that league. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it was an eye opener, but it was, um, just kind of reiterate the story. It was, um, it was a morning pregame skate in New Jersey. I'll never forget it. It was like, it happened yesterday. Um, young kid, I was 21 years old, rookie going up against pronger on a one-on-one -on -one pregame skate yeah. routine stuff. Yeah. yeah. Routine. And I, I toe dragged. He he tried to poke it. I pulled it around. It was beautiful. It's like a fourteen foot reach too. I know. <laughs> I, hey, I'm skilled. I yeah, get fuck, into that. I'm fucking, fucking right. skilled, Absolutely. man. So I toe drag. I shoot. I score. The coaches, the team, everyone's like, yeah, oh, that's even right. worse. Right. So <laughs> it kind of showed him up a little bit. And I love prongs and I respect him. And he was my captain. He's true leader. Like yeah, man's man, true oh, leader. Fuck yeah. So I'm feeling good about myself, right? I'm I'm way up here 100 percent. so i'm in line i'm in line waiting to go to the next drill and um i'm i'm a lefty so i got a stick in my hand i'm just <laughs> hand, waiting to go in line and this and he fucking prongs comes in line he tomahawks me two hand tomahawks me right on the wrist and i felt like i broke my wrist and he's like don't you ever fucking do that again to me and i'm like no problem. Yeah. I'll never do that again to you because I respect you. Yeah. You're my captain. Yeah. You're been in the league for a thousand fucking years. Yeah. No problem. But then what did you tell me? Right. And I told you that I sh you it, regret it. It put me in a box. Yeah. It, it did put me in a box to where then I stopped showcasing some individual skill on mm -hmm. certain guys because I respected them a little too much. Yeah. And I think that hurt me. Why? Cause I wasn't able, I put myself, I, I put myself in the box because then I wasn't, I wasn't going to show my skill. I wasn't going to toe drag him again. Yeah. I was going to shoot it or, or try something different yeah. and then not work out. Or just dump a puck in and right. put somebody right through the boards. Exactly. So Which you made a career out of. Right. But maybe if I had a different mentality on, um, 
you know, the respect level, like where I didn't, some cases I should have stuck up for myself yeah. a little more as opposed to yes, sir, no, sir, military mentality. Um, yeah, I thought maybe if, if I had more of a fuck you mentality, yeah. then I don't know. Maybe I showed more skill, not just in pregame scape, in practice or in a game because how you practice is how you play. Yeah. So if I'm just going to shy away from the skill stuff and practice, I'm not going to do it in a game. And that's, and that's got to be how tough when you're 21 years old. It's not like you're on a young team. No, 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 no. And it's no. not like Pronger's got 30 games under his belt. No, Yager was there too. Hartnell was there too. <laughs> like, Yeah, so that's that puts you in a tough situation. 100%. Just, you know, obviously you're that young guy that wants to be, yep. you know, likable. You want to be a team guy, which you right. always have been. We, are, right. we both are. Right. And, uh, but yeah, I guess when you're, you know, you're getting instructions from guys like that, it's, it's tough to it's rebel tough. It's or tough. be yourself. It's tough because... In that, that was going back almost 13 years ago, where in that day and age, if I, you know, challenged his authority, mm -hmm. maybe I wouldn't last another month or two months. Maybe I was traded because yeah. you don't gel within the culture. And if you don't obey certain ways, ship you out. You're gone next week. Yeah, I've witnessed it for, with other guys in the O, in the A, in the NHL. If you're not on board with the leadership group, sometimes they find a different path for it's you the business it's the business so there's not just politics and minor hockey right jeez who would ever thunk is that a word <laughs> thunk i think so um now. nhl career played in a few spots philly yep my good yep. old bruins yeah we actually remember we came down uh where did we come winter classic yeah we did yeah yeah. Rainy hooked us Great up. Great time. Yeah, Rainy hooked Great me time. and uh, a couple of my buddies up, flew down. Yep. I mean, you guys got shit kicked. Yeah, Fucking we did. Six nothing to the Habs. Yeah. Devastating. Yeah. What I, a sick weekend, though. I I think I I think I grabbed someone behind the net at the end of the game, though. Yeah, you did. I need to do something. You have to. We got obliterated. It was like five nothing after the first. Right. Right. I was ready to go home. Yes. If you weren't there, I, I think a lot of guys were. <laughs> if, you, if you weren't playing, I was out of yeah, it. Yeah, I know. I and I was there you. with two of my buddies that were fucking Habs fans, which was even worse. That's painful. But yeah, but That's that painful. alumni game was unreal. Yeah. That was sick. That was mm -hmm. a good weekend. Mm -hmm. But um, you did you drafted a Philly. Yeah. Played there how many years? Uh, I think it was in the system for four years. I played sick with the Flyers for three, and I played with the Phantoms for how one year. How fun was that? That, that was a dream come true. Yeah. Like, literally a dream come true. You growing. think you fit the bill for that team or what? I'll go again there tomorrow. I'll do it all <laughs> over again. I'll do it all over again. The Broad Street Bullies? Yeah. That's amazing. Then Bruins? Yep, Bruins. Uh, yeah, two years there. Phoenix, Arizona, whatever you want to call it. Arizona, them. yep, great time. Yeah. Then Nashville with LaViolette. Um, and then I did two years in Calgary. Oh, yeah, that's right. Great, in the bubble. great time yeah. in Calgary. Um, signed a contract, Columbus. It just didn't work out. Yeah. Yeah, my morals got in the way. Your morals got in the way. That was the the COVID year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We won't uh, we won't get into that. Um, your career again was not base, but compacted with aggression, hitting, fighting. Did you mm -hmm. enjoy it? I did. You did. I loved every you sick motherfucker. Every fucking minute of it, man. I'm like. I mean, this you did is, a hell of a job of it. It's coming from my heart and soul. Like, I envisioned myself eight years old, banging around, crashing the net, going into the corners, hitting Hall of Famers. Like, I wanted to do that. Like, I, I <laughs> yeah. fucking dreamt of it, man. And, and yeah. so I enjoyed every minute of it. And it wasn't like you slowly engaged in the style mm -hmm. of play. Like, a no. lot of guys get into that league and, you know, I, I'm not saying take liberties, but if there's a hit, they won't take it because right. they're still... You went in there fucking guns blazing, yeah. and you didn't stop till the mm -mm. fucking day you retired. Right. How was well, that mentally, physically? Obviously, it takes a fucking toll right, on your body. Right. How Look, was that? My body. Your body. Your everything. Just sleepless nights. I couldn't. I couldn't think that way. No. I could not think that way. The Most moment, people do. Yes. 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 A lot of them do. That play that role. Correct. Yeah. I could not because I knew. I was having too much fun doing it. Yeah. Why would I? Why? That's, that's a sick fuck. Why would I? I why would it. I think, you know, it probably wasn't until the last like three years that I was playing where I was like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sore. Yeah. I'm sore. Show me a little bit of, you know, um, love. some love. Yeah. Right. Some sympathy. Is that yeah. It? Sympathy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. right. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, embrace me. on the back. Right. Yeah. And, um, but at the end of the day, doesn't happen. It, right. Um, I'm okay with how it all went. But yeah, um, yeah man, I, I didn't I didn't slow up. 
off no the care. ice, on the ice. I didn't <laughs> slow up. I didn't want to slow up. Life was really fast. It happened really fast. I lived life to the fullest. I still am living life yeah. to the fullest. Fuck, clearly. Everything was fast, man. It was fast paced. My, my game was fast. Everything was fast. And um, that's the way I wanted it. That's the way it was. And uh, I have no regrets. Zero. I played every shift like it was my last. Bro, I think I, everybody knows that. I did everything. Everything that I did during my career, I did everything like it was going to be my last. That's amazing. Yeah. Too bad not more players do that, especially in today's generation. Right. I yeah. Think so. And I th to where, but like, maybe I could have been a little more mindful about what, what I was sense? doing. Um, you know, listening to coaches. Yeah. <laughs> systems. Yeah. Playing the playing yeah. the positions. Playing systems. Um, I was too much of a yes sir no sir kind yeah. of guy that's how i was raised yeah so i don't regret it but if i do go back and do something different maybe i challenge coaches a little more maybe i give my two cents a little more maybe now, i maybe now, i'm sorry in your situation right now coaching this team or coaching minor hockey or getting your coaching career off the ground mm -hmm. you gaining a lot more respect for players that are going to challenge you i want them to challenge you want me. them to challenge i encourage you. it yeah it makes them close it makes me and the co and the players closer from i mean obviously i didn't coach at this level i did coach for fucking 10 12 years and i feel like kids these days will give you respect on knowledge give you respect on what you've done mm -hmm. i mean it's kind of hard for a kid to give respect to a coach that's 700 pounds that doesn't know how to skate and Agreed. fucking yeah Agreed. you know holds a left-handed stick when he shoots right right you know and he's telling you what to do and mm -hmm. i know a lot of these parents especially in the minor hockey system you know are trying you know they watch coach's corner and fucking the leafs on saturday and they're hockey gurus right and they're trying to explain to these kids how yep. it's done but i think today's generation they have that like i mean they're a spoiled generation but i think as you said once once you want players to challenge you yep because it shows what it shows that they're number one they're students of the game yes they're confident in their play and whether they know it or not they're gonna learn with those confrontations yeah whether they end up right or they end up wrong they're gonna learn and i think that's the most important piece i've been on benches where um my captains or assistant captains are motherfucking the coach yeah and the coach is motherfucking them back but yeah, then I see them at the end of the game and they're shaking hands. Yeah, they won yeah, the yeah. game. They're hugging yeah, and they're having a beer that's with each other. Hockey, baby. That's creating a bond that brings you closer as teammates, as friends, whatever you want to call it. It brings you closer at the end of the day. And you were saying your career, it was yes or no. There was no motherfucking. Yeah. No, was no, I was, I was not. I never felt that I was in a position to ask why yeah. or to say, well, I was thinking about doing this or how about because this of the role that you adapted to. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's also where I came from on a family side of things. You know, my dad, it was his way. Yeah. And I didn't, I couldn't challenge that. Jeez, you must be Italian. Right. <laughs> so, and, and that was fine. No proc, no fucking yeah, problem. I life. still had a great time. Yeah, absolutely. Great, great childhood. Um, but He's the boss. Right. And he so says goals. that's right. And same with the GM, same with the coach. So I was very, all right, you want me to do this? Absolutely. Yeah, no, no problem. problem. You want to yeah. go out me to do this? A, B, and C? Yeah. No problem. Yeah. So they, they told me, we want you hidden, fork checking, back checking, play good D zone, um, fight when you think we need to fight. If anyone touches our teammates, you know what to do. Did you fight? I tried to. <laughs> <laughs> How many NHL tillers do you think you've been in? Oh, I don't know. It's a great question. I don't know. I, be, I have what, no 60, idea. 60, 70, 80, over 100? I'd say close to 100. That's fucking I would crazy. say close to... I could be way off, though. I could yeah. be like 40, no, I, I right? Mean, I don't know. I'm just thinking in an 11-year career right. that you got to be close Right, to but that. like mixing like... I'm thinking like training camp, exhibition oh, games. Oh, God. <laughs> like I fought, I fought like 20-something times my first year in pro, in the minors. My first year, I fought like 24 fights, in I think. Jungle. Yeah, it was nuts. But that, like, that's something you had no choice. Right, and I knew that. You had that mentality that I had to do this to yeah. make it. But it wasn't, no, it wasn't even like, um, I didn't go out looking for fights. I never went out looking for fights. Unless I was like in a bad mood. And my team was losing like 6 nothing. Yeah. Different story. Yeah, absolutely. But 80, I want to say 80% of my fights came from people big hits. Oh, or, okay. They had, I had to answer the bell. Yeah. And I think people got the wrong impression. Like, I could play the game, but I loved hitting. People ask me, like, would you rather score a big goal or, fucking or deliver a monster a hit? You're a dirty player. No. Never. No, I definitely was on the line. 100%. Right. 
hundred percent. Why wouldn't you I be? be? Yeah. That wouldn't so have they been ask if were. you big hit or big goal, big hit all day all long, day. all day long. All day. So people had a misconception about, you know, me hitting and then me answering the bell right away, regardless, lose fight, lose a fight, win a fight, draw. I was ready to go. And I just and so happened to win majority of them when I was growing up. Yeah. Hey, yeah, everybody loses some yeah, here um, and there. Yeah. Now, you saying that, I think that's like the golden rule of hockey that's still fucking around in any league. Like, you know, even yesterday watching that watching that game, like Kachuk. Yeah. Eichel's going toe picks, clean hit. Yeah. And it's a fucking melee. And then right. after, Eichel's like, hey, it's a clean hit. Love it's, that from him. So do I. Loved it. I love that yeah. guy. And it's like, clean hit. There shouldn't have been that. It's like. Great. When has there been a last time where somebody's absolutely pulverized the guy clean and just game goes on? Yeah. Never. No. Never. And no. that's why I think a lot of it is getting out because players like yourself that have that mentality are slowly fading out of the game. That's right. And guys are open. It's, it's the new generation game. Mm -hmm. The ice is open. Guys can fucking toe drag head down. They wanted speed. Nothing so Now they have speed, but now, now the hits. Even if somebody does want to take a fight, even just let them know you're there, you got to mm -hmm. fucking answer the bell. Agreed. Agreed. And it's something, like I said, if it's a dirty hit, if you're taking liberties on a guy, like mm -hmm. knowing that you're going to hurt him, hey, I get it. But yeah. it's like every fucking hit. It's annoying. It's really annoying. It's, it's annoying for you. Yes. A guy that's delivering these fucking Correct. hits. Playing your style of game. You're getting paid to do this yeah. job. And if you know what, sometimes where I would hammer someone, hit someone, and then I wouldn't accept that fight, I would feel that my teammates were like, well, why wouldn't you fight him? Yeah, yeah. Or the GM was like, oh, yeah, yeah. you probably should have fought him there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I had that weighing on me too. So I literally fought everything that came at me after that. And I'm okay. Like, I think the scrums and the all, like the clutching and the grabbing yeah, 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 with your yeah, gloves yeah. on and your fucking sticks in your hand still, that's got to go. Yeah. You can, you hit someone, one guy comes after you. Yeah, exactly. Challenges yeah. you. If you end, if you accept the fight, you accept the fight. If you don't, play goes on. Play this goes whole, on. Just play. This whole thing with dog piles and everyone's got their gloves on. All you see is sticks on the ice. So That's what has to leave the away. game. That has to leave the game. If you're not going to drop your gloves, don't go over there. I was that guy for sure. That's what happened with uh, me. I hit McKinnon and then Girardi came after me. Yeah. But so I hit McKinnon. He was a little banged up. He was a clutching, grabbing his shoulder. I turn around and I see this little Girardi defenseman skating after me. So I dropped my <laughs> gloves before he dropped his and I punched him and he was out. And I got suspended, I think, eight games for that. But again, don't come after, don't be sprinting at What's me. What's the or golden rule, baby? Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Right. Just, it was just like, I, that, that needs to like stop. Either you come I after agree. me and. I know. agree 100%. And I think. Like I said, the game, the game's the game. Obviously, it's going to change, but uh, I mean, right. the, the style that you played in, in that era and some of those teams that you played for, dude, that was the best fucking hockey yeah. ever, man. Yeah, being a flyer was like a, a dream come true. That's right up yeah. your alley, yeah. baby. The Broad yeah. Street Bullies, little, what was it, Geno's Philly Cheesesteaks? Yep. Oof, yep. you missed that place, eh? Yeah, you know what? I only had like one or two cheesesteaks while I was there. Really? The flyer fans might not that like that, but... Yeah, I was. So he's got a pretty good fan base. We lived like we lived in um, South Jersey, where the practice okay, ring yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't until because um, there were certain rules when I got there for the whole team, and once those rules faded away, we, then we were we were allowed to live downtown in the city. But by then, um, I was just it was rank home, rank home, rank home, hang out with the boys, rank yeah. home, hang out with the boys. So it wasn't really like. I'm on the streets looking for Gino's steakhouse. <laughs> and I wasn't a big fan. Might might get a lot of uh, backlash for it, but I wasn't a big fan of cheesesteaks. I'm more of like on the healthier side of things, but it's all good. I want that pasta, baby. Yeah. Pasta. Penne. <sighs> Penne what? Penne. Penne. Um, vodka sauce. Okay. I fuck with that. Pot vodka sauce or like a good meat sauce. Mm. Right. This is probably some good. Tons good of cheese. Yeah, tons of cheese. Like I'm Parmigiano Lodo. Yeah, eh? yeah, and the there's peppers. Probably a couple, there's probably a couple hot spots in Philly. Eh? Philly's got a little. They do Spazzo. This one spot, Spazzo pregame meal. Yeah, they the put a little bit of put a little bit of bacon inside Ooh. of the pasta. <laughs> oh, buddy, oh man, I love it. With the bread and the oh, oil yeah. and the, the you put the cheese Stay in the nice oil. Stay nice light before a game for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Yeah. Sleep it off. You're fucking right. You're yeah. Fucking right. Jake Vorchak. Is that what, that was his go-to? Yeah. Yeah. He showed me how to eat. Yeah. Yep. He showed me how to eat in the National League. 
eat and enjoy your wine respectfully. Yeah. He she he showed me the ropes. He had a pretty decent career doing that. Oh yeah. Is he still kicking? Uh, I think he's kind of slowing down with uh, concussions, and he was going through some shit with concussions. So fuck. Yeah, he's gonna do figure that out. Well, that's uh, that's pretty wild, man. Yeah, that's pretty wild. The brain, Just, man. The brain. Yes. Which brings us to our next point. <laughs> Obviously, um, on a first epi, uh, I kind of went over, um, you know, some of the shit that I was dealing with for the last while, mm -hmm. uh, addiction, mental health. Um, now, in a role like yours, you see all these all these guys, God rest their souls. You know the fighters, as they call it. Um, you know they battle demons. I right. mean, most most players do. Uh, everybody battles the demons in their own yeah. ways. Um, let's talk a little bit about maybe some of the shit that you went through, what you had to do to cope with it. Um, family wise, you got two beautiful kids, beautiful wife, uh, living this life as a professional hockey player in the NHL, and it wasn't. You know, no offense, I love you to death, but yep. you're no McDavid, right? You know, and I know so, that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, you know, you, you take on this role of pretty much fucking a legal UFC fighter on the ah, ice. Right. And yeah. it ain't fucking easy. No. There's definitely demons. I know, even without you saying anything, that, mm -hmm. that you and 99.9% and .9 of the people that had to fucking drop their gloves and stick up for their teammates mm -hmm. to make a buck yep. dealt with these demons. Right. So just to touch up a little bit on uh, on some of the shit that you went through, how you coped with it at that level. Mm -hmm. For me, it was a little different because I didn't have, you know, the career. I didn't have the NHL, um, you know, lifestyle, which God only knows, thank my fucking soul. Because if, if I was in that situation, we wouldn't be having this fucking right. pot right now. Possibly not. But um, let's let's hear, or, uh, let's touch a little bit about, on um, you know, kind of what you went through and how mm -hmm. you coped with that shit. First, though, like... I give so much respect to you for doing what you have done, you know, basically stripping yourself down and showing everybody um, what you've been through. And that takes big fucking balls yeah, and that takes sure. heart. That takes everything that makes a true, real person. Yeah, I appreciate that. Dude. So I respect that. For me, um, it started at like 16, like where, like my whole family, my whole Ronaldo side of things, they're, um, you know, they're on meds for anxiety, yeah. depression, sleep, yeah. whatever, you name it. Yeah. So at 16 years old, um, you know, I was heavily influenced by my family to go on medication for anxiety. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe a self diagnostic, right? Yeah. yeah, and that's why well, I went to the doctors. But it yeah. was like, oh, I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking about that, I'm thinking about this. I'm oh, maybe I'm overthinking it. They're yeah. like, oh, okay, well, here's meds. Yeah, exactly. And at that's at 16 years old, I'm like, all right, listen to my family doctor, listen to my parents, no problem. So I hold that that kind of was just a, a thing for me growing up as a mm -hmm. kid. And it probably wasn't until you know, in the O, when we're doing, um, when you're getting like, I got suspended like four times in the O. For like very back then and maybe now when you see it on youtube was aggressive hits <laughs> right borderline yeah, yeah but you yeah. know whatever i got suspended but that really it really fucked with my head yeah. because of like people you know saying shit about you and and people thinking that you're some type of way off the ice because yeah. you're this way on the yeah, ice exactly. really mentally it played with me big yeah. time and then when you get to the nhl and you have these meet and greets and these autograph signings. And I am I keep it real always, no matter where I am, That's I keep it real. Here, so people would meet me and they're like, oh my God, you're actually a really nice person. Oh, you're normal. Right, I'm like, and I'm thinking to myself, like no fucking shit. Yeah, why wouldn't I be? Why, but why are these people thinking that yeah. I'm not like this? Why are they so surprised? That really, it really yeah. messed with my head um, to a point where like, I didn't want to do signings anymore because I just couldn't, couldn't be in that situation yeah. where people coming to me thinking I'm this way and, but I'm really not really, really, really played with me, man. Fucking right. Yeah. And, um, but at the end of the day, it came a point in time where I flushed even like the, I was on meds for like five, five years, maybe yeah. came to a point in time. Won't forget it. I was in the minors doing a meet and greet and I canceled the meet and greet like last minute. It wasn't cool what I did, Yeah. but I was so in my head. Yeah. And uh, I got really emotional. I was like, fuck this. I'm like, I don't want to feel this way anymore. I don't want the meds anymore. I don't mm -hmm. want that. And I literally flushed them down the toilet. And ever since that day, I haven't been on anti, 
antidepressants or anti-anxiety yeah. meds. I just deal with it how I think I need to deal with it. Mm-hmm. And every time I deal with it, it's different. And I think that, that works for me. Yeah. That doesn't work with everybody else. That's not the recipe for everyone to go and try yeah. what I've done. Um, because I'm, you know, a way different. Per- Everyone's different. But for me, I just I'd rather deal with it head on and not be masked by medication. Yeah. So I went through some hard times dealing with certain things, and I went to some dark places, but I didn't turn back to drugs. I didn't turn back to depressants. So I just battled my way out of it, and I always saw the light. I don't know how. I just that's yeah. just I just did it. We don't ask questions. I worked through it. Yeah, like in my right. own head, I worked through it. And I kind of just put it to the side. I was like, no, it's not going to be like this. And it's not going to be like that. So, and expe- Especially, like I said, especially in that role you played. Yeah. Those nights where you know that you're, you know, you're playing this guy. Or no, that see guy. the fighting? No, no. Nothing. Never, no. That's huge. No, I never That's was like, huge. oh my God, you know, buddy's on the other team. I'm going to have to fight him. No, no, no. That's All balls, my worries though. were gone on the ice. That's balls. When I went to the rink, nothing else existed. Yeah. That was my outlet. That's that's what kept me sane as a child, going to the rink. Yeah. You All my problems that, checked yeah. out, gone. That's fucking incredible. Too that's, bad there's not enough people like that, dude, because we'd have a lot more people still here if they had that mentality. Well, I don't think it's talked about. Like No one's, no one's really talking about use the rink as an outlet. Why? Use the ice as an outlet. When you're mad... You can go and hit someone. Yeah, yeah, when yeah. When you're mad, if, like, I hated school. Yeah. I fucking hated school. So I, when I'm done. I graduated I'm done, from DeVry. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm done school, I can go to the rink, and I can let all my energy oh, out yeah. physically, mentally, Emotionally. exert it all yeah. out. Right on. Great. I don't think it's talked about like that mm. anymore. I don't know. Anymore, ever. Ever? I don't know. I, I, like, I don't know. I, I'm the only... I try to tell the the kids on maybe not the junior B level, like minor hockey. I'm like, I was telling them like, you can go out there and hit everything you see. You're you're allowed allowed, to go and do that. If someone's pissing you off, your mom and dad are up your ass about certain things or, you know, girl trouble, or you're going through some, you know, shit in your life. Hockey is the, probably the best tool to use to, you know, within the guidelines of the rules, Yeah, but yeah, take it out, man. It's an outlet. And if, you know, scoring goals, Helps you release that aggression, score 100 goals. Yeah, fucking right. Pass the puck. Yeah. Whatever. For me, banging and crashing helped me out. Yeah. And that's what helped me got through it. And then on the, on the pro side of things, I think it was just amplified. So I made it a bigger issue than what it really was in my head. By the end of the day, I was going to practice in the morning. And I was going to play that night or play yeah. on that weekend or every day. I was going to the rink. So me having the rink, me having hockey really, really helped me out. Save your life. Basically, yeah, yeah. You know, get you, that's and that brings me to my next point is we were talking about the transition from your last year before COVID in the bubble with with Calgary. You took a couple years off just to chill before we got into the whole coaching scene. No, no, because I was contemplating retirement like in Nashville. Yeah, and so I I was I was always. Um, I was writing down, I was educating, I was learning. Probably the last three years, I really became someone, um, I, I grew into someone who wanted to learn things, who was reading, who was listening to podcasts yeah, and just diving into different- Shit that you never fucking right. thought. That's I right. Know. So it was- it was but shit that like men do. Yeah. Yeah. You need to do yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you should. But at the same time, you know, if you talk to me about doing that when I was 23, 24, I tell you, go fuck yourself. Why? Because I- Cause I'm not, I'm not thinking that way. Exactly. I'm not thinking that way. So I'm never going to pressure someone who's that age. That's not willing to do yeah. it. Think about it. So, um, no, I, I dove into, I always wanted a gym cause I love training. I love off ice workouts. I love the whole fitness that you need to be a pro. And I don't think that we can get into it, but I don't think that's talked about enough. Um, so I, for your mental health, for Just everything, gym. Yeah. for everything. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I became a, I opened up my own business, personal training, yeah. hockey players. It was basically for anybody. At that time, there was no gyms open because of COVID. This was through COVID. That was, yeah, it was through yeah. COVID. Um, so I had a spot that, you know, you didn't need 
a passport or a vaccine fucking whatever whatever it was to come to the my gym and 95 mask right you can come i didn't care if you wanted it wear it if not yeah. i don't i don't care that's how it should be do whatever you yeah, want exactly <laughs> uh, it's gonna be painful you'll be fucking breathing through a mask but whatever man whatever floats your boat um so yeah i was personal training i did a lot of um hockey players i did a lot of um you know just everyday people who want to stay in shape or they wanted to train like an athlete yeah I thought that was a pretty cool concept. Right, it is. And then it wasn't until I, I've always wanted to put a spring team together because spring hockey for me was so fun as oh, a yeah. kid growing up. You no, know, like with your buddies and it's the middle of summer. You got two games a day. You're, you're Going drying out your equipment in the back in, of the right, pickup truck. Fucking parents awesome. are smoking butts. The best. Kids are just chilling out. Room, uh, mini sticks in the room. The best. Awesome. The best. So I wanted that vibe. I wanted yeah. to, pro I wanted to provide. On the other side of things though. Yeah. I wanted to provide a really cool atmosphere um, and develop kids at the same time. So it wasn't until I put my spring team together and I stepped behind the bench and I started developing guys on the ice. And I was like, wow, yeah, what is this yeah. feeling I got? Like, again, when I was on the bench, I wasn't thinking about anything else. Yeah. I wasn't worrying about anything else in but my life. The kids just in front of you. Yeah. That right there. Yeah. And um, ever since that moment, like a year and a half ago, I've fallen in love with hockey on the other side of it yeah. on the coaching aspect of things give development yeah give him yeah back. give him back is how good of a feeling is mm -hmm. it i that's that's one thing that i've learned even like you know in recovery just helping people yeah helping kids i mean i coached forever yeah you did sometimes <laughs> yeah sometimes for the wrong reasons yeah. but you know it was it was such a a gratifying feeling of like mm -hmm. seeing kids and you know what a lot of these kids that i took from like minor novice you know got drafted this year it was her draft year really who uh guys hey there was uh, adrian manzo we got drafted to windsor there's a bunch of guys from the Vaughn kings like, yeah I, like i literally fucking trained them no shit like 10 i don't even know 10 fucking that's, years ago that's rewarding and i went to go watch them at the ohl cup like i never watched fuck it you couldn't right. pay me to go watch a minor hockey right. game but right it was like you know, walk in there and see these kids. They got the fucking sideburns, little Guido chin strap, you know, yeah. dressing in they the grew suits up quick. with the fucking yeah, yeah. all decked out with the loafers, no socks, yeah. swaggy pee. I'm yeah. like, what the fuck? I know. These kids were coming to the snotty nose track suits. <laughs> but it was like, I was like, holy fuck. Yeah. Like, this is this is cool, man. Yeah. Like, I remember these kids when they were literally mm -hmm. just snotty nose kids. They kind yeah. of still are, right? Yeah, they are. Yeah. But, um, yeah, turning into men, getting drafted, experience it, because I did that. Yeah. You did that. Like, mm -hmm. nothing's better than going to that rookie camp and getting that gitch, getting that Oshawa it's Generals, best, fucking wearing it all summer, never taking it off, fucking yeah. change your Instagram profile to Oshawa mm -hmm. Generals draft. Like, yeah. And I, yeah. I told them to embrace it, man. 100%. I told them man. to embrace it, because, like, it's, it's, that shit's fucking... It's real. That's what man. it's about. Yeah. That's what it's about. And that's what I find like a lot of it gets overshadowed by all the other bullshit rather than just like the, the fun of it. Yeah. Because that was the best part, man. Going to training camp, going to billet houses, like not yeah. knowing like exploring, experiencing the yes, unknown. Yes. I mean, again, times have changed. I mean, our training camp was probably a lot different than it is now. Yes. Um, but uh yeah, I mean, listen, uh, you know, everybody has the path. And that's yeah. again I always respect and I always will respect the the way that you did it mm. as we talked about it being just solely on fucking hard work out working out working, out working people you know you were very skilled but it was like dude not I, a lot I of was guys you know what I was the thing that I think really put me in that box of being that enforcing tough guy role was where I was drafted 14th, oh, yeah. 14th round um now I know. I didn't know that when I was drafted. Yeah. That, like, if I wasn't going to score more than the first rounder, I was going to make the team. Yeah. And I knew I wasn't going to score more than the first mm -hmm. rounder, so what else could I do? But I, that wasn't my mentality then. My mentality was, like, me and my dad talked about it. We had a game plan. Yeah. You need to go there and you're going to fucking make a mess. Word for <laughs> word. That was, that was the game plan. And that, that is what you fucking did. You need to go did. there and you make a mess. Yeah. So that's how it got noticed. Yeah. So... If I knew that I was going to get noticed that way, then everything else would fall into play. Yeah. Not knowing that, like, okay, he wants to bang and crash and fight everything. Let's keep him there. Mm -hmm. I didn't want that. I didn't want to stay in that yeah, box. Exactly. I just wanted to get noticed. Yeah, 100%. So, but then I got noticed too much on that side, on of, that things, side of things. Which was fine. It worked out. But, um, you know, I would have not, I would have rather been not been drafted and then had a pick. 
of maybe four or five teams that mm-hmm. were looking for a player that could play the game, score goals, bang and crash. Yeah. And then been able to do everything as opposed to just Solifying here you go. Part. Yeah, here's your job. So I think where I ended up in the draft, obviously played a lot. I wasn't political. I didn't have finances. I didn't play in Toronto. Um, I didn't know coaches and GMs and scouts. My dad didn't kiss ass. I didn't kiss ass. I was just a... Uh, I'm on the ice. You like yeah. me? Come and find yeah, exactly. me. My, my dad's philosophy was no matter where you are, if you're good if enough, you're good, they, will, they find will find you. you. And that Gee, some was... of these fucking minor hockey parents that, uh, that are listening to this, how many times have I fucking said that? Yeah. If you are good, they will find they you. They will, dude. no matter where you are. No matter where it's you crazy. are. It's crazy. And even just to touch up on like this whole, like you said, 14th rounder, played 11 seasons in the fucking show. Like, what's your message... Especially to to the guys in this dressing room that you're mm-hmm. coaching now here mm-hmm. in uh, here in Pelham, like what is your message to these guys that like feel oh I didn't go top five rounds or I didn't get drafted like yeah like like I explained it to them and I haven't even been nowhere near where you have but yeah. I've been far enough where it's like dude who gives a fuck yeah getting drafted especially nowadays is ninety percent money it's just an invite to camp. It's an official invite to camp. Like signing is easy, getting drafted yeah. is easy. Making Everyone a signs. fucking team. Yeah is is the part but like right you know 14th rounder sixth Mm -hmm. rounder to philly Mm -hmm. you know coming from a blue collar fucking steel town not toronto not the gthl like yeah and you fucking did it right you did it right you know so that's what i try to explain to these fucking people you know even like guy like wayne simmons you know he was my age yeah never drafted i was in my third year in the o i think he was playing junior a he wasn't drafted to the O? No, man. Sim wasn't drafted to the no, O? No, dude. He was, I think he, he played midget double A, and then he played, I want to see like Brampton Capitals. No Don't way. And then he gets a shot, goes to the Owen Sound, makes World Jays. Owen Sound, I don't Jays. even think he played in the A. I think he no, went no, from, he didn't play in, I don't didn't. think so. This guy went from fucking the OHL, boom. Yeah. You guys probably had one of the best fucking crews possible. Yeah. yeah. He lives on my street. I see him all the time. I love <laughs> yeah. him. He's a good dude. Eh? Love him. He's a good dude. Yeah. But, like, that's what I try to tell them. Yeah, it doesn't happen to everybody, but it's like, you know, look at this guy, for instance. Yeah. Never drafted, never this, never that, boom. Gets a shot. Fucking, sh- if you're good, they will find you. That's right. Makes a name for himself. Plays World Jays. Boom. And LA, what did, what did Wayne do? Wayne outworked everybody. That's all he did. Crazy, Obviously, man. he has skill, but if you don't put the hard work in to let your skill shine, crazy, it'll never, it never be shine. And same with Giordano. Yeah. That guy's a Hall of Famer. Never been drafted. Menjo Pani. Never drafted. What do those two have in common? Both Italian. <laughs> <laughs> Word. Yeah. Word. But anyways, listen, we're uh, we're gonna wrap this up, dude. Um, you know I love you forever. You're a fucking unbelievable guy. I respect the hell out of you, uh, and a lot of people do. Um, and I think you made a lot of good points on you know the whole mental illness side of things. Yeah. Um, you know, what it takes to make it to that level, not mm-hmm. being a Connor McDavid or a Connor Bedard or, mm-hmm. you know, and I think, I think a lot of people, um, you know, they wouldn't even know it's a fucking real estate podcast cause I don't want it to be. Yeah, what right? do you think of the market? Real estate market? Yeah. I'm got, not even, I'm not even into it. Just say it's good. It's great. It's right great. Now. There you go. Right there's now, there's it's hot. Estate. It's great. Yeah, this is the guy to fucking buy a house from. <laughs> there's our uh, there's our real estate uh, spiel of the of the pod. <laughs> but uh, on a serious note, dude, you know I love you. Likewise, brother. Um, and uh, thank you for hosting us in this fucking place. I did not expect this, yeah. man. And um, for those that don't know, Zach Ronaldo on Instagram. You guys have Instagram for the team. Yeah, I think it's just Pelham Pelham Panthers Junior B Hockey. Pelham check us Panthers. check us out. Yeah. Um, you know, I got Instagram Ronaldo at Ronaldo Zach. Just a bunch of coaching, motivational um content, if you will. So yeah, just give us a follow there. We help greatly appreciated it. Yeah, well you heard the man himself and um obviously you guys know my handle at Mr. Piva. We'll uh, we'll have this up on iTunes and Spotify. Um, and thanks again. Thanks for listening to, uh, to episode two with the homie Zach Ronaldo. Much love. See you guys later.